By the first light of day, fishing boats are making their way back to port. It's early autumn, and on Japan's northern island of Hokkaido, the salmon season has begun. The boats have been out at sea for just a few hours, but already their holds are filled to the brim. Each year, 40 million salmon are harvested from the waters around Hokkaido to supply the smart restaurants of Tokyo and beyond. It's all about speed, rushing the fish from the sea to the market. Very different from times past when the indigenous people of Japan, the Ainu, stalked each individual salmon in the rivers of what was once their land. But this is a story not just about new methods replacing old, Hokkaido's modern salmon fishery symbolizes the conquest of one culture by another, the stripping of a people's rights and dignity. A short distance up from the coast, a very different scene. A century ago, the Japanese government took away these people's right to fish the rivers of Hokkaido. Even now, the Ainu need special permission to catch just a few salmon in the traditional way. Trucked in for the killing, nets laid so they can't escape. It's a one-sided contest. To this, a once proud race of hunters and craftsmen have been reduced. Shigeru Kayano is the most famous Ainu in Japan. He's also just made history, becoming the first member of his race to gain a seat in Parliament. Kayano-san has devoted his life to defending Ainu culture, while Japanese scholars were measuring it up for the graveyard of history. Literally measuring it up. As they did his mother one day in their village. For a thousand years, using just bows and arrows, the Ainu fought off the armies of Imperial Japan. Until late last century, when the Meiji government, in response to Russian moves in the Far East, annex the frozen frontiers of Hokkaido. The Ainu were driven from their hunting grounds, the source not only of their food, but also their ceremonies and traditions. Conscripted as forced labor, they were even banned from speaking their own language. It was a policy of extinction by assimilation. Today, most Japanese believe that's where the story ended. If they think of the Ainu at all, it's as museum exhibits, part of the tourist circuit on a rainy day. Here at Shiraoi, an Ainu village has been reconstructed, where Ainu staff dress up to perform for the visitors. While history's less photogenic side isn't completely forgotten, 
アイヌ語、風俗、習慣、いろいろなものが禁止になり、どうか、The eyes soon glaze over. And after the show, what have the customers learnt? 日本人っていうか、同じ感じはしますけど、そんな特別変わったようなというか、違う民族とかいう感じはしなかったですけど。Even some of the staff wonder whether they're preserving history or ignorance. そうですね。こういう生活っていうことは、こういうあのお家に入って、食べ物も、まあ、質素なもの。それと熊と一緒に生活してるってそういうような目で見る方が多いですね。Indeed, it seems to be the bears, not the Ainu, that most of the tourists want to remember. Behind the tourist facade is the continuing story of Ainu discrimination. The Ogawas are an Ainu family of three generations. On a bright Sunday in Hokkaido's main city of Sapporo, they could be just other faces in the crowd. But this is a society which values conformity above all else, making the Ogawas aliens in their own land. The Hontoni Yasu Shakai Janakute, Ichiban Kikena Tokoro, it's them Kubikirare Tokoro, Bendi Nitskais and a toilet paper no Yoni Tskare Tirunoma, Imano Ainu Hitais, Keste Yoko and Akitimasu. It's understandable that many Ainu try to conceal their identity. The census counts 25,000, although the real figure is probably double that. But there are more and more Ainu who will not deny their heritage. Today is called Ashia Chepnomi, the festival of the salmon. It turns out those fish we saw earlier being speared from the canoe represent a culture not lost, but reclaimed. Anointing their prayer sticks with sake, they call on the gods of fire and stream and mountain. By the riverside in Sapporo, they declare to the rest of Japan, we have survived. If any one person is responsible for this resurgence of Ainu self-confidence, it is Shigeru Kayano. It's four hours drive from Sapporo to the village where he lives. Nibutani is known as the Ainu heartland, although the highway has also made it a thoroughfare for Japan Incorporated. The man I've come to meet as he prepares to mount the national stage strikes me as an unlikely sort of crusader. A collector of artifacts, author of the first real Ainu dictionary, who hates wearing ties and munches homegrown watermelon for lunch. いい場所だと思った。政治家たちは嫌いです。Back in Sapporo and at a dozen places around Hokkaido, Ainu are starting to learn their native tongue again. Stories told by the old women, rescued by the tape recorder, passed on to young women. Like Harumi Sawai. ただでもそれは日本政府が何かしてくれるのを待つということではなくて私たちの中でもある程度きちっとしたこう整理が必要な時期でもあったと思うんですアイヌ民族からその議員の人が出たっていうのはやっぱり糸口にはなると思うんですよね0と1の違いというのはやっぱりすごく大きいですから
Sawai Sun is a university graduate, has represented the Ainu in international forums and visited Australian Aborigines. She knows her own mind, including when to use her excellent English. So Ainu people, uh, are not, we are not happy when people say that you are a minority, but we are the indigenous people. Do you think Japanese people are these days ready to accept you? I don't know, some people are, some people are not. What Harumi Sawai wants is for Japan to become a society in which being Ainu, being different, is nothing special. What, what do I hope? Finally, she gives the lie to the notion of a vanishing culture. Obviously, you're not vanishing. No. Absolutely not. And so now, the Ainu people turn their eyes to the diet here in Tokyo, where a government committee is considering a proposal to replace the 19th century law, which has been the instrument of Ainu oppression, with a new law granting them compensation and a permanent voice in parliament. But for five years, that committee has made no progress unable to decide even whether the Ainu qualify as indigenous people. The Ainu cause has had no champion in Tokyo, no one to give it a national priority. Shigeru Kayano may be a king in Nibutami, but this is unfamiliar territory, where an Ainu voice must strain to rise above the madding crowd. It's a message the rest of Japan may not be ready to hear. But like it or not, the nation's lawmakers henceforth will be obliged to listen.